charging, uh, about uh, going to trial of all 19 defendants. Just, you've done that. I mean, you've had large trials in New York. How difficult is that? Is that possible with 19 well, in this 19, case the, like this? 19 defendants is a large number, and it's a difficult number for a court to manage. Uh, but we in Manhattan during my tenure had cases of, you know, of much larger groups of defendants. They were particularly gang cases. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge in this case is you have uh, to have all 19 defendants. You have, first of all, a, a, you know, a complicated factually complicated and uh, set of you know, set of charges. You have some folks who are marginal on the error, and then you have some folks like the former president who is at ground zero of the case. Mm -hmm. So the judge is going to have to manage defendants, different allegations, different kinds of motions. Uh, it's a lot for the court to manage on top of managing Donald Trump. Some of those 19 theoretically could make deals prior to this going to trial. I mean, as you said, some of them are on the fringes of this. Others are right at the epicenter. Sure. The RICO count, as I understand it, you'll have experts from Georgia law probably on later, is, but has a five to 20 year range of sentencing. Right. So anybody in this defendant group who is looking at five years is going to think long and hard about whether or not they really want to take the you know, wear the Trump flag mm -hmm. uh, and go over the cliff carrying it. I, I think there will absolutely be defendants who want to cooperate, want to try to resolve this. I'm not sure that D.A. Willis needs their cooperation. It seems like a very strong, straightforward indictment. Obviously, uh, it's quite detailed and there's not a lot, not a lot left to imagination. Right. Uh, it is what it is. And she'll I think she's going to push forward. But 19 is a is, is a big number and particularly dealing with the def president as a defendant. The, you had talked, uh, we were talking previously, you were talking about the importance of a judge in a case like this, keeping things moving. What have you learned about the former president in your experiences in court? Uh, chaos agent. Uh, he, you know, he, every, he's an he, agent of chaos. He, he, and he, yeah, he's an agent of chaos, and I think his whole career is kind of going from one disaster to another uh, and distracting attention from the last disaster moving to another, but being happy that he's in attention. Right now, politically, he's completely consumed all the airtime on the Republican right. uh, nomination for president, even while he's being indicted. How does that play out in a courtroom or in a, in a legal battle with him? Uh, what play out? The, the, the agent of chaos. I mean... Well, I think what it, what it means, first and foremost, for the judge is, in this case, are how, you know, how do you manage a man like Donald Trump as a defendant? An average defendant who has said what he said, who has done what he's done under indictment, would be hauled back into court and threatened with contempt, uh, incarceration, or a huge fine. Uh, none of those things necessarily are dissuading factors for Donald Trump. Right. Uh, again, I'm speculating, but were he to be put into jail on contempt for doing something as stupid as his picture with him in a bat and D.A. Bragg's right. uh, picture right next to him, uh, clearly and in, in intimidating. But were he to be put in Rikers Island, I, I honestly think he'd probably use it as a mechanism to, you know, to excite his crowd and, right. and, and his, his, uh, no, no his judge teams. has really, I mean, this is unprecedented. So there is no judge who has experience with a, a character like this. No, I don't think ever with a character like this, but clearly the judges that are involved are experienced. And I, and I think they all, uh, bottom line, are going to really need to control their courtroom. They need to be the manager uh, to set expectations of decorum and what is responsible behavior and what is irresponsible behavior. And they need to hold the president, former president, to account. How they're going to do that, because the typical tools that a judge would use may, in fact, not be as effective with the former president. But I think, um, ultimately, uh, these judges are, are, you know, are going to make it work. Mm. And, and there's something sobering. You, know, you saw President Trump.